Uh, welcome everybody. National Teeth episode. I think we're on seven. Seven. Yes, sir. Uh, knocking them out. Uh, I am Casey. And I'm Myla. Yep. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, last episode was nuts, and we know that. Um, this one, this <laughs> one's, this one's probably going to be a doozy too. Um, I uh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I uh. I've really been looking forward to this one because th- this is the this is the one that like set the whole thing in in, in motion, right? This this is the whole reason I even reached out to Asmodeus, right? So basically, mm-hmm. guys, this is this is going to be, um, uh, you know, I talked about my relationship with Asmodeus, and, and this is kind of Milo's relationship with Lilith, in which really trampling him into his his occult world and in his life now, and so I I guess. I guess let me let me let's do this. Uh, you have to you have to take us back to the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, and let's 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 give everybody the why behind what you're thinking, and then just walk us through what what, what happened with you and her. It's, it's yeah. great. It's a great story. I'm excited for this one. So I'm gonna take it back even further, and I'm gonna say. So when I graduated high school, I started getting uh, panic attacks. I remember talking to you about it and my family about it. I started getting a lot of panic attacks. Uh, I was unemployed. Uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And I fell into like a depressive vacuum. And it got, it got pretty dark. And it was a rough few months I was like six months after I graduated. Wasn't until like fall or December that I I remember looking out the window and I had tears in my eyes and I was looking at the stars. I remember this very vividly. And I was looking at the stars and I just pleaded for anything to give me like, you know, a reason to keep going. You know, and I knew the universe didn't work miracles overnight. So I went ahead and went to bed after that. But it was it was a desperate plea. And I remember it's probably a week or a week and a half after that I read the complete book of demonology. And it's such an underrated book. Not a lot of people know about it, but I guess that's what kicked us kicked our practice off, I guess you could say. But it's a great book. Um I was reading it and I happened upon Lilith's name and I remember taking note of that because there was just kind of something there, attention or something, but I didn't pay much to it and I kept going in the book and I was kind of excited reading this book because I was a Christian at the time and, you know, reading about the occult and, you know, demons and evil and demonic, you know, it was kind of cool, but I thought the whole thing was like fake. So I was kind of playing around with it and I was looking at the sigils and I decided to do something. I was going to cover the name and I'd look at the sigils and I was going to pick my favorite. And I, obviously everybody already knows what's going to happen. It, it was Lilith, right? So I kind of like how you describe getting goosebumps when you talk to Asmodeus, that synchronology, I think that's the correct word, but this the thinking of those two things happening gave me goosebumps and I kind of closed the book and I kind of put it off. <laughs> and I remember doing a lot of research on her and almost to the point of like idolizing, you know, I kind of fell in love with her character and with her story. And to the point where, you know, you got to keep in mind, I'm a Christian and I bought a statue of her. Uh, this statue, apparently, it, I bought it on Etsy. It came from Ukraine, and uh, it took like a month to get in. Is and that I the? <clears throat> is it behind you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I should. Yeah, let let's see it. It's it's really cool. <sighs> that's it. Yeah. It's uh, yep. That's super. Yeah. It's the staple of my altar, but yeah. it's a really popular image of her. Yeah. And 
I bought it. I unboxed it. And I felt a tremendous amount of fear and excitement when I unboxed it. I think of like when you watch the movie Annabelle and they first show the doll, how the music turns to like a screech and it's like this could this this is either going to be great or this is going to kill me and i took it to my room yeah and I, I i put it up on like a like a platform that was elevated and it like oversaw my whole room and i was excited but i i was scared because you know i'm a christian right you know this is the quote unquote queen of hell you know the first human to rebel against god yeah, but you, you, blast. I, it blasts for me but yeah you're in a dark place and you're you're, you're reaching out for just somebody it's, give me something here right so you're, you're right but at the at the time i didn't know right? Right. i didn't know this was her answering right right so i i went to bed and before i closed my eyes i got one last glimpse of the statue and it's overwatching the whole room mm-hmm. and i went to bed and i had a dream and this is kind of the dream that I FaceTimed you for the first time ever. And it was like, like a wow. And it started when I was, it was, in t- it, was in t- it was intense. I know that. I remember that. I was, it started with me being in like this alley with two guys, you know, and these guys are shaking and they're scared. And they're like, you know, what are we going to do about this enemy? You know, this evil you know, and then they mention Lilith, but they they mispronounce her name. They call her Lilith or something. And I corrected them pretty rudely. And they kind of looked at me in a weird way. Like, why like why are you like defending her type deal? And the whole dream cancels out. And now I'm kind of teleported to the kitchen of my house, right? And the moonlight is shining in very just the whole scene's weird and I'm pacing in this kitchen and it's very dark and I'm thinking to myself, why did I defend her? Why did I correct them on the name? What's so significant about the name? And I'm looking at the fridge and the whole room's behind me. Kind of when you talked about uh, the girl Hades who was behind you, kind of stalking you. I kind of weird that I brought these two together somehow, but that's cool. I I'm looking at the refrigerator and I I feel something staring at me and there's not, it's not often that, you know, I have a dream where something's stalking me and I turn around and I see this girl about 14 years old, darkened eyes, not like supernatural, the TV show where they're all black, but darkened, dark hair, wearing like a Victorian dress and it, it's like, it has feathers on it and stuff. It's, it's the weirdest thing. And she's kind of looking at me and she didn't say anything and nor did I. We kind of had a stare off for about 10 seconds. And then in my head, a name kept beating into it. And it was Lilith. And it was echoing in my head until I eventually ran. But I I didn't run away like I should have. I ran straight towards her. And I don't know why. To this <clears> day, <throat> I don't know why. I, I wonder what would have happened if I ran away. But I ran straight towards her. And Good for I you. Asked Good, for her, you. Good for you. I, I asked her, you know, are you Lilith, right? Like, are you, are you this person? Mm-hmm. And she, she's like kind of looking straight. I'm looking at her from the side, right? And she turns to look at me almost in like the audacity of even touching me. And I look down and I realize I'm grabbing her arm. Oh, I man. Get scared. I, I get scared. Right. You know, I, I kind of yeah. like, yeah, that's, that's probably not a good idea. And as soon as I realized that I grabbed her arm, the whole dream blacks out. I'm still dreaming, but like, there's no image. Like the whole thing blacks out as soon as that happens. Like she canceled the whole dream. And I remember feeling my body and I had vibrations all over my body. My whole body was vibrating every single inch of it. And I woke up after about 10 seconds of the vibrations. I woke up ecstatic, but scared. Because something that I thought was a myth that I was idolizing, but, you know, because of the story and stuff, was actually, like, you know, quote-unquote real. And it sparked into a whole thing. <laughs> I did, dude, I, I, bro, I remember waking up the next day 
and you had sent me a text that I had to scroll and scroll and scroll. And I was like, we just have to talk about it, bro. I don't know. <clears throat> I couldn't piece it together. You, you could, you're typing it so fast. You could tell that you, you really fell onto something. It was cool. Really cool. I, I was ecstatic the, like for the weeks to come. And I, I took the complete book of demon archery a little bit more serious and kind of wanted to implement the practice, but, you know, I did it while I was a Christian. So this, this is this is the dumbest thing. I might get some hate for this and total hypocrite by doing this. But I would I would pray to her, right? And I'd I'd make an offering to her. I I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't burn a candle because as soon as I burn a candle, I would picture myself as like a Satanist wearing like a hood, you know, sacrificing animals. I that was the that was the thing that I didn't want to do was the right. candle because right. I knew I'd be far eating, gone. eating, yeah, eating babies and cats and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, you don't do that. Yeah. So, so I would, you know, pray to her, and I give like a light offering of like incense or something. Sure. But then after, I would I'd turn to God and I'd ask forgiveness for what I just did. It was the most backwards thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I'd love to see what Lilith's expression was when I was doing during this like six month period of let me describe it a little bit more. So for instance, there was a time where I did an offering. I was I was on my bed, I was messing with tarot cards. I did an offering and I heard a a conscious voice, a female voice inside my head say again after I closed the offering. It was like a separate conscious. I can't. I can't describe it. I obviously can't prove it. I don't. I don't really care. I remember that happening, and I was scared to the point where I grabbed her statue, and I was scared to put the statue away of like you know what she would do to me. So I put the statue in the corner of my room and turned it to face the wall. And I was scared <laughs> to sleep. I was scared to sleep for like weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> and I remember, you know, I did an offering to her and I'm like, you know, this was great. Thank you for everything. But I think we should part ways, you know, because at the time she was giving me dreams and doing certain things that it, it would scare the living shit out of me. Right. Right. And, and I go to God and I'd be like, you know, please forgive me. You know, I'm coming back, yada, yada. And after like three days of contemplation, I'd be like, well, she didn't really threaten me. She didn't really hurt me. And I'm the one that reached out to her. So this is kind of unfair. So I go back to her and I did this flip flop for like six months. It was like three or four total times that I did it. And eventually I went to God. And this time I was like, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's like a, there's, there's a word that I want to use and it's, it's like a, a lust mm. but like you you look at lust in a very sexual way and this lust is like beyond that it's like my mind my body and my soul long to learn and experience lilith mm. and i never felt that for like christianity so i went to god and i'm like you know i don't know what it is but i have to pursue this you know if i don't then I'm not, it's, I have to. So that's when I kind of went to her and did like a little bit of a devotion piece and it sparked everything to follow. You know, I did a big one with shadow work. So for you, I think with your experience with Asmodeus, you were already way far into your path. So it was like a complete stop and reset. For me, it was like she grabbed my hand and it's like, you're going down a path that you don't want to go down. Let's go down this one. It was more of a gentle push, unlike yours. But yeah, I did a bunch of shadow work, had a bunch of dreams with her. Had quite a bit of experiences hmm. that we could get into, but um, a major achievement was I eventually got off antidepressants. 
I was going to ask, Which, I was, I was going to ask you, when did the panic attacks and that whole kind of thing end up like washing away through all this? The, the panic attacks. <sighs> I, I used to get them. They're pretty awful. They exited as they are. And, you know, it's, it's crazy because when people in high school talked about panic attacks, I was kind of like, what, what, you know, anxiety, you mm -hmm. know, like. I don't know what that is, but I had a panic attack and like I like went to the hospital. I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah and they were yeah. like, "No, you're just panicking." <laughs> it's like, "Oh, this is what that is. Like, this is awful." But it stopped as soon as my is kind of Lilith came into the equation because it was it was a flicker of light at the end of the tunnel. Something that I can pursue. Something that like I mm -hmm. want to wake up and pursue. Yeah, you know, you before go. I woke up and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't have goals, I don't have ambitions, you know. But she was that, and it led me kind of on this occult journey, collecting books, working with other demons, and yeah, I don't have spots all over my room, <laughs> right? But <laughs> I have quite a bit of dreams and and little things. So. Yeah, so you know, Asmo came to me in that dream as a great bird. So do you think, mm -hmm. do you think like the meditating and the intention creates the, 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 the open portal for the dream? Or do you think that that is just natural when, when you have altars and you, you, you know, burn the incense and you, think, give, you give the offering? And I think, I think it's all about and yeah, intention and timing, but you could also open yourself up to it, right? You can do the classic sigil under the pillow, or I don't do under the pillow. I do under the mattress. I prefer that. And you should probably test with that if anybody does that. But it's, you know, there's times where <laughs> I, I went on a quest to scientifically prove Lilith to myself, but not, not necessarily Lilith, but the dreaming aspect of it, because the first dream was obviously incredible. And science is the repeatability of something. If you can prove and repeat, repeatedly prove it, you know, then you can do it. So I would, I would pray to Lilith and I'd be like, you know, give me a dream tonight. You know, and I get a dream and, you know, at the end of it, I'd see her sigil and I'd instantly wake up and, you know, it'd be a dream from her. And then I'd be like, all right, give me a dream, but turn it into a nightmare. So I'd have a dream of her chasing me and I was scared shitless and I woke up and it was a nightmare. My heart's racing. And then I would think of, because people say that, well, if she's in your subconscious mind, you can dream about her, right? right. Like scientifically prove it. Right. So I would think about her all day. And I'd, I'd pray to her and I'd be like, don't give me a dream tonight. You know, and I wouldn't have a dream. And I'd be like, don't give me a dream tonight. You know, I wouldn't have a dream. And I did this for like two weeks and it was spot on every single time. So that was a cool little test. Obviously, I can't prove that either, but it's a cool little test. And Well, it's between you and it's between you and her. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the, the, the moments that you had where you were confused about, like, oh, I'm going to Lilith and I'm going to God. I'm going to Lilith and I'm going to God. But you have to realize that, you know, if 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 God is real, then he created Lilith. And you shouldn't be ashamed to, to do anything or be part of anything that God created. Like, that's... Um, this is how I, I think of it. Uh, Bill Bill Burr is a comedian. You know Bill Burr, the comedian? Mm -hmm. he, he's got this thing where he's like, well, you know, I think you set me up for failure there, God. You know, like you make me and I'm not really good at math. And, you know, I don't walk real well and I'm kind of dumb. And then you create cocaine and hookers. How, how, how You know, you didn't see this going sideways, did you? Like, you know, and it's, it's a joke. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. But but right. it's it's the point of well if if you're if you're the all all creator whether God exists or not I, you know I, I think there is one but 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 if there's an all creator who creates the whole thing you know say it's the abyss of the universe I, I like it more of a power than a person but so say this thing is created well then how can it be angry at you for 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 being interested in something that it had created. 
Yeah. You're, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah. It just, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. <clears throat> so, you know, as a Christian, you're talking about the satanic panic in the eighties and everyone who's teaching you came from that. And so it is scary. And, you know, there's a part of you, I, I'm the same way. It's, it's no different than when I read the Nocturnicon and the little crackle and I go run in the house <laughs> at three in the morning. I'm scared. You know, yeah. I watch, I watch horror movies. I don't want that to happen to me, but the, yeah. but, the, but the reality is it's all on how you perceive it. So if you wake up and see your room spotted and tattoos, well, you can freak out. Because you're definitely yeah. haunted, or you can look at that as like you're, you're touched. You were just touched. So it, it's all on like um, your perception of what's happening to you. you. If you think it's positive, then it's positive. If you if it feels negative, maybe maybe it is a little negative. But you just you just you, you know one thing you and I agree on: the only way out is through. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I just don't think you give up on that. But I think there's a lot of people out there that's in that same situation of, man, I want to learn more, but like environment and my, you know, the way I grew up has me tied to this. It's going to be so hard to break it. I want to be good, but yet, you know, and so I think once people understand that <clears throat> what's bad isn't bad and what's good really is like kind of normal. It's no different than John D and Edward Kelly working with the angels. The angels are horrible to them too. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, if anything, if anything, working with a fallen angel is much easier than a regular angel reading that book. <laughs> so who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's, is it not your perspective and your experience at this point? What do you think? I mean, anymore and who knows what's right and wrong yeah it's all it's all it's all gray so i like to you can't look at it in extreme good or you know bad it's all it's all gray right so in samaria uh yeah samarian lore right you have lamash too or lamas too and she is tasked with human population control so, you know, she's strangling babies and killing people and all this jazz. And some might look at that as bad, but like we have to keep population under control. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah. a gray area. It's not good nor bad. You can make up examples of, you know, both, but that's just her role. And mm-hmm. you can look at her as a demon, but, you know, it's an important task. So everything, you can't look at it good and bad and yada, yada everything is shades of gray and on the christian topic it's everybody a lot of people go into the occult with uh what they deem as christian trauma not necessarily like you know a priest was you know mean to you or did you know sexually explicit things to you but more of you go into the occult and you're like this is blasphemy you know i'm gonna get sent to hell and you have this very preconceived notion that you can't get past i ran away from lilith and asked god's forgiveness three times in a row in the span of three months it was it was pretty bad but you know yeah. i got past that sure yeah, yeah because yeah. you know like you said in the previous podcast you know if you're a ufc fighter you don't take one loss and then give up you know you you keep coming back you keep going and that's how i was able to get to the point that i'm at is because yeah. of her and keeping going yeah, that's how winning is done. Hey, there's a really cool story about Lilith. I, I just want to bring it up to you. I'm, I'm sure you've heard it. And I just want to talk about it for viewers and everything. But, I, you know, everybody wants, like, the link and where we got it. And and, and I'm, I promise you we'll find it and we'll get it out there. But right now, it's just off the top of our heads at this point. But um, I read somewhere... Uh, it could have been Sumerian. It could have been. Um, it could have been a Christian view, but basically, it was. Um, they they had made either God made Adam or like Inky made Adam Adamu, or you know the first man was was created, and they had asked Lilith to be the the wife of you know Adam or Adamu. Or, whatever and oddly enough she rebelled at this and said no way like 
I'm I'm Anunnaki or I'm a fallen angel or I'm I'm a god or an angel or, or whatever she is and said absolutely not will I be part of whatever you guys are creating here right and th and then mm -hmm. and then that's when like Eve was created Eve was created out of the bone of Adam and all this the rib and all this crap <clears throat> yeah, whatever I don't mean to call it crap I apologize but then but th but that's the story of like Lilith's like original rebellion was like, no, like I'm part of this hierarchy of things. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, like she felt like it was a total demotion to do that. And, and then, and then therefore here's the bad name that she gets because she defies, you know, law or she defies what God had said or whatever. And, you know, I, I don't know that but I, have you heard that one have you heard that story about her so you're tying you're tying in adamu and the inky but it's a it's a very abrahamic uh view which abrahamic is basically you know christian and judaism and you know the abrahamic god yahweh yeah. and basically how she there's views that she was like you know a goddess in her own right and they wanted to you know put her put her down to Adam's level. But this, the popular story goes that, you know, Adam thought he was superior to her. Ah. And she was like, you know, F that, you know, I'm leaving. So she flies away, pronounces God's ineffable name and then flies away and turns into a demon. God comes down, talks to Adam and Adam's pleading with God being like, you know, I thought I was superior. Blah, 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 blah. God sides with Adam. So God's sexist. We <laughs> if, the, if the story's if the, if, the, if the story's if the story's real, then I mean he sided with Adam being well, superior to Lilith. Could totally be Enlil coming down and pretending to be God. But yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. He 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 sends three angels to round uh, Lilith up and bring her back to the garden, and she basically says no, and the angels fly away and then they god creates eve which is a more submissive <laughs> yes yep entity for adam yep yeah so if the sto if the story's true right or if it's just a story well you know anytime you know you're you know there's something oddly enough about mythology and like so, so many times they say well, you know, like, here's just an example. So the American Native Indian, way back in the day, uh, they talked about these fire-breathing dragons, which, you know, the ancient UFO people, you know, they say, oh, no, you saw a UFO, and you didn't know how to describe it, except for, like, this breathing dragon. Well, why why could it not be a breathing dragon? Like, like there's so much of mythology yeah. that I just believe that happened you know, everyone's like, oh, the sun god Ra, he never existed. Yeah, yeah, I think that's Inky's son Marduk, and I think they called him Ra. Like, I, I think this all, like, this is for another episode. This this is for another episode where you and I talk about, like, the atheist and the the agnostic compared to the, the, the om, omni -ness? Omnism. Um, um, omnism. Right. And so that, what that's the belief of like, hey, everything is, is true. Right. Like, yeah. you know, and, and so <clears throat> there's a lot of that fable talk of like, hey, if, if Lilith is mentioned somewhere, she was probably there. Now, whatever happened, who knows of the story and the translation or whatever, but she's probably there. It, it would be it would be really really badass to find out that Lilith was in the Garden of Eden with Adam. That 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 yeah. that gives you some originality. That puts you in a place where you can actually like, like if she speaks, you listen. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because she was there. Yeah, like that is crazy. If you were there, mm -hmm. you know. Is there any action? Is there any action with her in the garden with the snake that you know of? 
in any literature. It'd be really interesting to know that. There, there's there's thoughts that she was, you know, the quote unquote snake. There's a lot of thoughts that, you know, Inky was the snake or that, yep. you know, Satan was the snake or Samuel was the snake. Um a, a couple times she's seen as the snake, but it's it's like a lot of Gnostic literature. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, it's not not often she's kind of her own separate entity. But I think there could have been some influence if if, <sighs> if the story is true, then there could be some influence in, on her, you know, and the snake perhaps to help Eve kind of see her potential, mm. I guess you could say. Yeah. You know, don't be submissive. You know, here's your potential. You know, realize your nakedness. So, I, I, uh, I love it. I, it, it's like the first fight for it's actually like the very first fight ever for like women equality is Lilith standing mm-hmm. up to everyone and saying, uh, you know, no, that's not fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I like, I like to quote Bill Burr one more time. It's, it's a, it's funny. It's, it's not meant to like ruffle feathers, but he was talking about, uh, women wanting uh, equal pay to like men. Mm. And he said, that'll never happen. I I should always get a quarter more an hour than you. And then of course the woman says, why? And he says, well, in the event that we're on the Titanic, you and the kids get to go and I just die. So I'll go ahead and take my quarter. Thank you. Women and women and children first. It's, it's, it's hysterical. I, I believe in human rights and I believe in the whole thing, but like I just saw, I watched a Bill Burr episode the other day. So it's like fresh on my mind. Some of the jokes. Anyway, I apologize to everybody about that. Hey, uh, the timer's going, Hey dude, awesome story. Uh, about Lilith. Absolutely love it. I, I love the, um, <clears throat> I was actually looking at like, um, Frizzin, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's the goosebump thing you get, and like mm-hmm. you, you, you got it on a different level of like electricity, like you, like it was goosebumps, like t- like times six. It was, it was it was vibrating my whole my whole bed, dude. Was, I felt my body in my bed, and the whole like bed was like mm-hmm. shaking. It was, no, yeah, it was, it was weird, but it was. It was after I touched her arm. Right. I think it was like kind of like a this was real. So you know, go so does how you want. So does it not go back to I'm scared or I'm going to go through with it, right? Because one of the first things in like the Exorcist movie, and don't get me wrong, it's a movie, is the bed shaking. The bed shaking, and she's shaking on the bed. Well, 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 so she, everyone takes that as satanic panic. They get scared. You take that as a, you were touched. That that's, it's all on how you, it's all on how you look at things. There's a band that I love called ghost. uh, They're very popular nowadays, but uh, they actually have a song that says, if you have ghosts, you have everything. So they're also like you and I, where they look at it in a different way, right? So, so the other example would be: mm-hmm. if an alien lands, do you run or do you go encounter? What What would you do? Well, not much because you know America's shooting down every UFO that comes into our airspace. So I don't, I don't think they'd be able to land. But you know, we're just China's seen ten spy balloons already. You know, from <laughs> us, like just, there's just balloons. Uh. I was watching a TikTok. No, but- I was watching a TikTok video of kids like just blowing up balloons and just saying, uh, "This is a spy balloon," and they're just launching them off one after another. It's hysterical. This whole thing is so stupid. It is. It's. It's a big distraction. I know. But anyway, all right. We we are absolutely out of time. Um, I I would want to end it like this. Uh. 
your relationship with Lilith is amazing. Um, you know, you've you've grown it to to levels that are just unheard of. You know, you reached out in desperation, you know, and and, and that is such a it's such a an emotional, wonderful thing to be at at that that, that side of the rope. You know, we all been there. You know, but you mm. you pulled through, and that's how winning's done. And you reached out, and now you have this entity that backs you and g- gives you like all these different feelings and stuff. So, what do, what do you think your uh, before we go? What do you think uh, your future plans with Lilith are? Are you just going to continue thanking her and doing altars for her, or, or are you going to try to like take it to a different level? Or are you just gonna? Are you happy with kind of where it is? I'm happy with where it is. I in demonology, you can have a matron or patron deity. I consider her my matron deity, uh, which is kind of your go-to significant entity. And the reason why I got you know a tattoo of her, which I'll have to show on a different episode, but it that's kind of how I view her, and I'm happy with it. But as I as I said before, I'm researching into the divine feminine, and I feel like that's a majority because of her, and that's kind of where my past is leading me. So no. It's awesome. Yeah. It's beautiful. You are definitely a top G. I think we should both uh, sign up for Andrew Tate's class to become top G. I think I think it'd help us both. I love that guy. I do. I do. He's just fun. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let. Hey, whatever. People can hate. Um, all right, bro. You the man. I love you. Uh, any any last thoughts on the episode seven, Lilith? I think you killed it. So. Yeah, yeah. Great entity. Yeah, she is. She's great. All right. So uh hit us up on the email. Uh reach out to us again. Last couple episodes, pretty intense. We get it. And uh be nice to hear more stories about people who have intense um, you know, actions with, with entities. It it definitely exists. Uh, you know. Th- there's spots all over my old apartment. I'm just saying. All right. All right, buddy. We're out. Peace. All right. Peace.